Welcome back for more from our workshop in the 2021 NICE project. I'm going to transition us to a different question. Okay. Um, specifically the quote, I give you your faults. And so um, there is a stage at which the Mrs. W's are giving our heroes, all right, you need this magical device and you need this, you know. And so here are the spiritual gifts that you're going to need to go fight this evil. And they give Meg her faults, which Meg thinks, what a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm trying to always get rid of my faults. Mm -hmm. And so my question for you how do you come to accept your own faults and see them as power? Ooh, Can we one. view Meg as a neurodivergent character and not neurodivergent in the sense that we might understand it now? I don't think that Lingle was interpreting her as, you know, being on the autism spectrum or something mm -hmm. like that, but she is neurodivergent mm -hmm. in some sense. Mm -hmm. And then how do we put those faults into our artwork and show our feelings about them? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I feel like at 58 years old, I still struggle with that part of this book, that idea that your faults are a good thing and use them, you know, in positive ways, because my faults are things like I am so impatient. I am really intolerant of intolerance. <laughs> Um, and injustice just drives me insane. I mean, I have, it's my temper in terms of things that I see as, as evil, you know, things that are evil and I don't like them. And I, I have no good way of dealing with, with the way I feel about that, except for to be angry about it, you know, so I'm impatient and I get angry and I, I almost everything in my life has come from a, a base of starting point of fear because as a as a very young child, fear was the first the first emotion. If you're very young and you're told by a doctor you have three to five years to live and no one ever talks to you about that, you're just you know left with that. Um, and you don't know what that means. What is death? What, is, what does that mean? What's, what, what does that mean? You know, how does it feel? You know, if you don't know, you're just afraid. And so for most of my life, my first reaction, my first instinct is one of fear. If, it, if I'm in a situation that um, is, is, is bad or, or not going well or something, I'm, I, as a young, uh, young person, unlike Meg, I was not running with uh, Deborah. I was not running with scissors. I was not adventurous. Uh, you couldn't have convinced me, you know, to, to go out and do something like most kids would go out, jump off a train trestle or so, you know, that's a thing here in Noblesville that I, there's a certain train trestle that it was like a rite of passage. Kids would go jump off it. You couldn't have convinced me to even go to the train trestle. I mean, I was just always very afraid of doing anything. So this idea that accepting your faults or what you think of your faults, Lord knows what the world thinks your faults are and see them as some sort of power. I mean, the only thing I can say to that is that constantly being afraid and a worry wart and everything made me a very protective parent and my kids are, you know, my kids are healthy and happy today. But I mean, I, I'm not sure I can answer this question very well because I feel like I still struggle with getting rid of my faults, trying to overcome my faults. And the second part of your question, as far as artwork, whether it's paintings or poetry or writing, a lot of what I do is like therapy to try to get those more negative faults processed out, expressed, or at least admitted. You know what I mean? So I don't know if, if I, I mean, that's a tough one for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for sharing that, Alice. Yeah, I, it's probably too much information, but you know. No, that's okay. And, and when I wrote this question, um, I, you are, are welcome to share what your specific faults are as you're comfortable. Nobody has to confess if they don't. Sure. Feel like right. It. No, I know. So. I, you, you know me, Sarah E. I'm no longer the introvert I was as a child. And I feel like as a co co uh, host and uh, co founder of nice, you know, I got to put myself out there, whether it's comfortable or not. So, you know, I do sometimes try to answer what I think of as the tough question in my mind. Do I really want to say this? But, mm -hmm. but I do, I do admit that, you know, my faults are, um, fear, impatience and, and anger for 
things like injustice and intolerance in the world against humanity, against certain groups of people and things like that. And um, I, uh, again, I, I don't know that I will ever come to terms with accepting those faults. I can admit them, accepting them and using them as a, as something, as a tool for good or power, if you will. I don't know. The most I could say is I try to put them in my art, like I said, as a, as a kind of, a, but that's really more for me as a kind of a therapeutic thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Deborah, thoughts? <laughs> um, wow, that's a good question, Sarah. I, you know, I, I kind of look, if I, if you have to list, you know, what would be considered faults, I mean, if you, you know, usually those are, it, it ends, I see this listing of unfavorable personality characteristics mm -hmm. and, you know, to me, faults, you know, there will be different ways that I handle things, different ways that I see things and, and I see them all as a part of, and, and you kind of touched upon this, Alice, that, you know, what would be considered faults, I, I see them more as learning opportunities and moments that are demarcations for my growth. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, if I have something that I'm struggling with and I present in a certain way, you know, which might be a fault to others, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't beat myself up about it. I embrace the confusion. I embrace what whatever it is. I embrace the the, the trials and the tribulations. I may not like it at the time, but I, I I embrace them because I know that they are. It's a part of creating, you know, this this soulful self that you know I aspire to be. So I would say, you know, looking at you know, and growing up, that the faults. If there's anything that would be labeled on me were not given to me by myself. They were imposed by others. Mm -hmm. And, um, and a lot of those faults, the, the name calling and the labels and the categories had to deal with being quote unquote different, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, yeah, I was that kid that ran with scissors. I was the, you know, a dirty child is a happy child. And, and, you know, when I, <laughs> I can remember, you didn't come so form. I, Telling no, I didn't, and I and I can remember telling my daughters at one point that, um, it, and and to me it, it was just, you know, isn't everybody this way? You know, when when I could hear, you know, the like classical music can be so enwrapped in classical music that all I hear are mathematical equations, mm -hmm. and you know, so I'm I'm telling my daughters this, and and they're looking at each other saying, "Oh, mommy, don't say that out loud." <laughs> <laughs> They'll put you it's in like, the nut house. You know, and, and so, They'll make you take so, the rest cure. <laughs> so, you know, my my big fault, which is imposed on me by others, mm. is that, you know, I'm constantly trying to smell the color nine. <laughs> and, I love that. And I take that. I yeah. want that fault. Yeah. And c'est la vie. Yeah. I, I that's think very that's, healthy. that's very, yeah, that's really good. And I guess now, I, how that comes in my, out of my art, I'm sure you've seen it because, yeah. it, you know, I can go off on a tangent in my poetry and in the word choice and in the dance of the, how the words are, you know, warped and weft. I think it makes you very things. confident in, in how you write. I feel mm -hmm. like one of the things that comes through in all of your poetry is a, is a confidence and um, I love that about your poetry. It makes me feel more confident when I read it. I feel well, like I you. get some of thank that. You. It rubs off on me somehow, mm -hmm. the, the, the confidence that you just imbue in your writing because you are in your writing. It's so you. And I feel like I absorb a little of that when I read your poems and everything. So that'll or, make your hair gray. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have faults and I'll tell you how I deal with them is to either write a funny poem about them, usually rhyming and metered. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> or, um, you know, cause then you're, That's then you're vlogging <laughs> <laughs> or, or to do the characters that I'm writing, 
the faults on different sides of the spectrum. So then right. your main characters become different aspects of your personality. And then you can let them take the consequences or succeed with whatever that trait is. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the way of working out like, okay, is this a pro? Is this a con? Is this both to have this trait? Right. So um yeah that's 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 very creative ways to 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 utilize your own life like madeline langle did i mean this book is based on a lot of her own personal life and beliefs i think that's a that's a well they always say write what you know you know and and a lot of the books we look at it seems like the authors have written what they experienced but they've made it into you know a fictional novel style um writing but Mm -hmm. um yeah I so wanted to talk a little bit about the danger and the value of conformity. I'm worried about running over though. Do we want to get into that or should we just go right into what we're inspired to create next? Well, I think we're all a bunch of slightly nonconformist people here. <laughs> and I think we all agree the value of, of nonconformity is that celebration of difference and making the world a better place by, by being yourself and bringing your own you know, brand of humor, of a style of personality to the table, you know, um, I don't think any of us would think conformity is all that great, uh, you know, serious conformity. I mean, I think for safety's sake, certain things that you have to conform, we should all wear seatbelts, you know, and things like that. But um, I think most of us would, at least when we're talking about creativity and, and your personal lives and everything, being, being a little bit of a nonconformist isn't a bad thing. That's, that's yeah, I think that there's a there's a space for a degree of conformity mm-hmm. if yeah. it means belonging to a community. Right. But there's there's dangers at either extreme, mm-hmm. and definitely what we see in Wrinkle in Time is the extreme danger of conformity. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. So it's time for the my favorite question, which is, what are we now inspired to create after this discussion? Well, Deborah was writing time. poetry while we were discussing. <laughs> I, got, so. I got three poems started. Here. Wow, <laughs> <Nice>. that's awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, this quote in particular, you know, is so lyrical. And of course, it's about music in the story what's happening is a song is she hears a song is playing and there's a there's a song in the air if you will and it envelopes her and sweeps her i along. wish i could compose this, the song the melody that she hears mm, yeah well and that's why that. i feel like of all of our quotes this one is the one of the ones that's going to be the hardest for me to create anything because um it to me, being unmusical, I, I feel like this this is a music, this is something that should inspire something musical. And I'm like, I'm not musical. So <laughs> I have to figure out if I can if I can come up with a piece of artwork or a poem or something that that in any way, you know, kind of goes with this or is inspired by this. But it's just such a lyrical there's a lot of visuals in it though i mean you know for visual artists there's a lot to work with Mm -hmm. so i feel like this is actually going to be extremely hard for a musician to respond to Mm -hmm. um because the advantage of describing one art form through the lens of another art form is this is the pinnacle here of what Mm -hmm. she's hearing Mm -hmm. only the melody is real it is transcendent Mm -hmm. and so like i was talking like the the kid i was talking to at work today where she was in her head but she didn't have the words and this would be something that it is so transcendent Mm -hmm. that it's in your head yeah but you don't have the notes yeah so (laughs) how do you create art that is transcendent. That's that's mm-hmm. the challenge of for every artist of every genre and medium out there, right? Mm-hmm. You want to be transcendent. You want something you create to take to sweep people aloft, you know, and you want it to be a moment, glory among the stars. You want that to be what what your artwork creates. And wow, that's a that's a tall hill to climb. That's a mountain. I don't know, you know. 
<laughs> in college, I wrote um, a soundtrack to a chapter of my favorite uh, young adult novel. Wow. And there was a particular moment that I wanted to write the music to describing a golden splendor that shot past her forever out of reach. And uh. it's like this where I struggled for months. Mm-hmm. Like, what does a golden splendor out of your reach sound like? And I, mm-hmm. I can never do it. And I'm right. so happy with the final result. Yeah. This is so. this one's going to be a challenge for me for sure. I I think I'll start with trying to write a poem maybe and then or or maybe a prose poem something that just flows and then try to see if I come up with something visual I can create. Um, you know, I've already I've worked on something for Sula and the yellow wallpaper already. Um, got a couple things you know actually i have one thing that's a combination of sula and the yellow wallpaper so (laughs) i'm working on some different things but this one's a tough one this one's Mm -hmm. gonna be tough for me it's so beautiful it's almost like i daren't i daren't try (laughs) you know yeah i think i will i will i will attempt to write something musical but i i have a feeling it's going to be right here when i'm right here (laughs) yeah that's isn't that the way it is sometimes Mm -hmm. with with creations man oh Oh. well but we do have a little bit of time to work on these because our you know we have uh was there should i say the, are we ready to say anything about the next workshop please or? do okay yes. well let me just put this up real quick i'm sure we all know that the last workshop is on the fifth or i'm sorry on the ninth the fifth workshop thursday the ninth next thursday we'll be talking about tarzan of the apes which oh my goodness that is bound to be quite a conversation we have so much to talk about squeeze all that into an hour oh and then um Then after those workshops, we have a little bit of time before our submissions deadline of the 23rd of September and then the presentations event on 30th of September, both of uh, that's also a Thursday, the 30th of September. Mm -hmm. So we're rocking and rolling right along with all of our um, nice shenanigans. (laughs) (laughs) And what, what else do we need to say, Sarah E.? The people should read this book. Everybody, oh gosh, yes, everybody. Read Wrinkle in Time by yeah. Madeline Lingle. That's right. Oh my gosh, it's a beautiful book. It's fun. Fun, fun. This fun. was very inspiring. Thank you, thank you for taking me here. Oh, thank you for did being we, here. Did think, we I carry just, you a lot? Oh my goodness, I think I just experienced a tesseract. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's it. That's it. That's a perfect ending. On that note, we're going to say thank you and All right. good night, excited, guys. Love you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thank night. you. <laughs> This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the, the Roundtable. Table.